Welcome to Chasing Tense. My name is Sabi. Thanks for joining me, everyone. In this video, I'll be summarizing and condensing the test of the Aprilia RSV4 2021 factory. The test was conducted by Aprilia with a lot of publications from all around the world at the Mizano World Circuit. Now, I couldn't really find much information on YouTube or anywhere else about it. I mean, especially from a British point of view. However, in Moto, which is a very famous and very well renowned uh, publication in Italy and also Red Live have put some information out there. So I'm going to show you one lap of the Mizano World Circuit with this new bike at the end of this video. But if you can read Italian, you can go to the description and see the link by Inmoto. They've done a really good job. What I'm going to do is for people who can't read Italian or uh, just want to see a video about the whole thing, I'm going to give you all the information. It's going to be very punchy, hopefully very short, and it's going to be very interactive with some infographics as well. So if you want to know um, in depth about the bike, what the bike is all about, all the upgrades Aprilia have done, everything about the bike, I made a half an hour video five days ago. I'll put the link in the description so you can check that out as well. That is a very in-depth video telling you everything about the bike. So today is not the day where we're going to go through all the upgrades because I've already done that. This is going to be a complete track focused video. So here we go. Let's start it. So even before InMoto Publications went out to the racetrack, they've given a quick overview about the bike. Now, I know I've told you earlier that I've done a detailed video about all the upgrades on the bike, but let me just do, let me do justice to InMoto and go through all the uh, upgrades with you anyways. So it's a Euro 5 compliant bike, 1099cc V4 configuration, 20cc more than before, 92.5 pound-feet uh, feet of torque at 10,500 RPM. Uh, which is 125 newton meters, uh, 217 horsepower. So power has not decreased, even though it's Euro 5. What has unfortunately increased is weight by three kilos. So wet weight of 202 kilos now. Now also the bike has got modern aero. So uh, the vents and the plates uh, in the wing. So within the wings, you've got little fins. They cool the engine and also the wings move hot air around the rider. So that is really efficient, really modern, and the, the wings are based within the fairing, so they don't stick out very much. Uh, if you see them sticking out in the pictures, trust me, the pictures do not do justice to the bike. You really need to see the bike uh, to know um, everything and anything. Now, it's got full new electronics, six-axis IMU, traction control, wheelie control, launch control, all sorts of electronics. I don't want to go into detail because I've done that all before. I don't want to bore you. Let's cut to the chase. Let's go straight into the track stuff. How all the upgrades come together to make this an absolute epic track bike. Okay, first track benefit uh, in Moto talk about is ergonomics on the racetrack with comfort in mind. So what Aprilia have done, normally if you own an Aprilia, I own an Aprilia RSV4 RF and I know they are quite a high ride bike so you kind of sit sitting on top of everything with this bike what they've done is bring everything down so let me go through everything so what they've done is the tank now the width of the tank has been decreased by 17 millimeters and also the seat has been lowered by 9 millimeters and foot pegs also have been lowered by 10 millimeters now now you actually sit in the bike you're part of the bike Already the center of gravity of this bike is pretty low, especially with the new swing arm, which is underslung, which reminds me very much of uh, a world, the World Superbike Aprilia. So they are underslung, the weight is below now, even you sit kind of quite a little bit below. I mean, if you think about it, uh, 10 mm, you will say it's not that much, but still everything helps when the rider is sitting low, the bike handles better also this is good news for tall riders who will really fit well with the bike because the seat is a little bit bigger a little bit wider the tank is a little bit skinnier so you will get better ergonomics on the racetrack Inmoto also said that Aprilia has built this bike for comfort on a racetrack so less fatigue your shoulders your arms your wrist uh, kind of pump arm pump uh, and all sorts of things uh, this bike has has been made to work around these things. Also, because the tank is now skinnier, the turn in, so you, when you push 
your bike uh, with your inner thighs it's easier the braking is more stable because you are now within the bike the tank really supports you really really well however they've also said now if a rider is very tall nearly six feet at the racetrack he will start to feel discomfort pretty soon so still i think the bike is built around max biaggi i this is my personal thought because he does a lot of work around the bike and Max Biaggi isn't one of the tallest people out there. So even though Aprilia has built this bike for the track, DNA is still the old DNA, which is fantastic. To be honest, the, this bike has always been great at the racetrack. So ergonomics and comfort has been changed to give it more comfort and more ease at racetrack with less fatigue. Okay, this is crunch time now. How does this bike feel dynamically on the racetrack? Now, this bike has got some big shoes to fill in. Previous Aprilia RSV4 1100 factory was absolutely epic at the racetrack with all that work done by Max Biaggi. This one is exactly the same, but even better at many things which the other bike wasn't better at. Now, let me go through these points one by one. Now, Inmoto have said that as soon as you are entering a turn or acceleration or braking the bike feels really stable there is no undue movement there are no surprises in the middle of the corner now one thing the previous bike was very well known for is from braking into the corner entry so fast you're approaching fast brake corner entry bike is absolutely stable there was no other bike which could match that and this is exactly the same no surprises no undue movement absolutely brilliant breaking it breaking into the corner what they also mentioned was something really interesting that this bike can carry so much corner speed that the rider really needs to be very attentive pay a lot of attention because the bike really urges you to go quicker and quicker and if you're not concentrating well you could be in a lot of trouble so the bike in the corners is absolutely sublime now the choice of superlatives and compliments by in motor publications is absolutely intriguing because they've used the word ferocious for engine power what they say is coming out of mid slope corners the power is absolutely unbelievable the mid-range torque of this bike is very ferocious and it just kind of compensates uh, from what the bike wasn't before so before the previous model was amazing at entry corner entry amazing mid corner but exit out some of the publications said that the power isn't what it needs to be now you've got that power which absolutely catapults the bike out of corners now one last thing in motor said which i found really interesting before we move on to electronics what they said that the power even though it was a lot of power and the torque was everywhere throughout the rev range uh, but it was always manageable you were always riding the bike the bike wasn't riding you which i found really interesting and also what they said that the electronics only complemented the engine power okay let's talk about electronics so one of the first things they've said that electronic has completely been renewed so the new electronic does not intervene in power delivery whatsoever it just plays a side role alongside you riding and you don't even notice the electronics doing their magic now what they also said that before the electronics would kick in especially when you you were coming out of the slow bends if you give it some you would actually know that the electronics are kicking in with this one the electronics are actually helping you to gain lap time rather than slowing you down or actually bothering you now nothing feels bolt on about the electronic like, like before in the previous models uh, the bike was always getting evolved and they would bolt something on to the electronics then they will put something else on to the electronics this is a completely new electronic system it encourages you to go faster and faster it also encourages you to ride faster but safer okay let's move on to braking on the racetrack now in moto said that they really tested the brakes on the racetrack and the front was absolutely planted and the rear was moving slightly now i own an aprilia as i told you earlier now i know the rear sometimes does move slightly but the chassis and the uh, swing arm are so poised and they're so plush that everything is very manageable they did say that the brakes are still in my calipers and they are amazing but if people take the bike to the race tracks uh, appropriate uh, race pads uh, or appropriate uh, track pads uh, are you know going to be beneficial but the brakes they had not much complaint the rear was moving slightly but nothing to worry about 
Okay, next is the electronic suspension on the racetrack. They found no issues with the electronic suspension. It was moving really well with the braking and acceleration. It adjusts itself. It's got its, uh, it, this is a 2.0 version. So it's got that artificial intelligence. Also the steering damper now is electronic. So everything works together with that beautiful chassis and that new underslung swing arm. Everything moves together. So if the suspension finds anything which is unstable, it's really good at stabilizing stuff. Uh, with the braking being so stable into the corner, mid corner stability and coming out of that corner you've got that power and that electronic suspension working side by side, the bike felt absolutely stable on the racetrack. I think it would be really nice to see uh, a bit of carbon if you're paying 23,000. Um, overall view, my personal view, um, I found the bike absolutely brilliant. The DNA continues with this bike, same feeling with the in-motor people as well, they are feeling the same thing that the DNA from the previous bike has only evolved and gone better with this one. Uh, except for that little bit of instability they found uh, on the rear brake, everything else uh, was fine. I'm pretty sure this braking thing can be dialed out. But they had no complaints. They found the bike absolutely full of racing pedigree, the soul, the Aprilia soul of pure racing. So guys, I hope you found this video interesting. Um, I just didn't want to make this video too long, wanted to give you a good glimpse on how this bike is on the racetrack. I'm going to make two more videos on this bike. One will be on electronics and the dash. So please keep an eye out for these two videos. And I hope you enjoyed this video. Look after yourself, take care. And if you like this video, please do press like because then it promotes the video to other people so they can see that as well. And please do subscribe if you find my work beneficial to you.